Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Blockchain Central. In today's episode, we'll break down the most important blockchain events of May 2019. Today, we'll look into the recent price increases of Bitcoin, analyze the newest announcement by the European Central Bank, and bring you more updates on Facebook and its cryptocurrency. This is simply our selection of what we think was important. Please let us know if there's anything else you think we should add to the list. Before we start, please be sure to subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and check out our Medium blog at medium.com backslash at block essence. Probably the biggest news of last month is Bitcoin hitting a new record for 2019 and, according to reports, briefly cracking 9,000 USD on the Bitstamp exchange. It's worth noting that the last time Bitcoin was anywhere near 9,000 USD was in May of 2018, a year ago. In general, this is great news for the entire industry, which has been experiencing a bear market for more than a year. Now that 10,000 USD target is all the hype, but it might be difficult to tell if it will materialize. The upward movement of Bitcoin is partially motivated by a generally more favorable outlook on cryptocurrencies within the entire financial sector, multiple compliance moves in different markets, and the ecosystem's clear departure from the ICO model can also be mentioned as contributing factors. The big gains of Bitcoin are of course a positive factor, but the drastic and sudden price drops that reach up to 500 USD in a matter of minutes are further reinforcing the notion that Bitcoin is highly volatile. As is usually the case, the rest of the market is following closely with most other coins seeing gains in recent weeks. Assets such as EOS, Ether, XRP, and Litecoin have all gained on this bull market. All those movements signal that crypto winter might finally be over. We'll monitor all developments and keep you posted. Here at Blockchain Central, we're always trying to report on compliance and regulatory news, especially ones involving the authorities or central banks. According to a recent report published by the European Central Bank, arguably one of the most important financial institutions in the world, the crypto market does not pose a threat to financial stability in the Eurozone. The research was inspired by concerns pertaining to money laundering, market integrity, and consumer protection. The analysis was carried out both from the point of view of individual market participants as well as the European banks. The fundamental reasons why the crypto market is not a threat to the European economy can be attributed to the limited acceptance of crypto as money and the limited holding of crypto by the European banks. Another reason quoted was the fact that even at their peak, the outstanding value of crypto assets was too small to warrant concerns for the EU financial system. The report also recognized the public demand for digital, safe assets, but also stated that ECB is not currently looking to launch their own digital currency. The institution sees little rationale behind launching the digital version of Euro. Of course, if the latter was to happen, that would be a very big deal for the crypto space, as ECB is the body responsible for administrating monetary policy within the Eurozone. It seems like Facebook and their cryptocurrency are on the agenda every month with good reason. The launch of Facebook's stablecoin is probably the best chance we'll currently have for a widespread crypto adoption with the promise to truly disrupt the market and bring a real-life use case for DLT. Each month we see more details emerge from the social media giant hinting a significant progress that the company is making with the project known as Libra. On May 17th, Coindesk reported that Facebook had registered a new company called Libra Networks in Geneva. The new fintech is focused on blockchain and payments, as well as data analytics and investing. Not much else is known about the company, but the fact that it incorporated in Geneva is an important development for the region and its significance in the crypto landscape. Project Libra is also reported to have a presence in Tel Aviv. In addition to Libra, Geneva, a well-known financial hub, is also home to Bitly and Taurus Exchange, a crypto bank Mount Pelerin, and real estate platform Token Estate. Another reason for Libra Networks being located in Geneva is the fact that the project leader, David Marcus, grew up and studied in the city. Even though the currency has not been officially confirmed by Facebook yet, Globalcoin, as it's internally known, is reported to launch in a dozen countries in Q1 of 2020. We're all looking forward to that while hoping they will come up with a better name. In other news, we'd like to mention Consensus launching a platform for tracking luxury items. The project, run in conjunction with Microsoft and a multinational luxury goods conglomerate, LVMH, is aimed at providing proof of authenticity and history of ownership for exclusive items. The ambitious goal is to track the entire supply chain, from raw materials, 
through the point of sale all the way to the second hand market. The system takes advantage of the Aura blockchain and uses its immutability to guarantee product authenticity. Aura is built on Quorum, a permissioned version of the Ethereum blockchain, and consensus contributed to the design of ERC721 smart contract platforms for the non-fungible tokens. Ripple continues its push for faster cross-border payments by partnering up with Ria Money Transfer, a subsidiary of Euronet Worldwide. The partnership aims at increasing the speed, transparency, and efficiency of transactions. The customers will gain additional insights into fee structure and transaction details, as well as estimated completion time. It's worth noting that Ripple has added 13 new customers in Q1 of 2019. We have an update of the Bitfinex and Tether controversy from last month. New York Attorney General has instructed Bitfinex to reveal all the documents detailing the controversial loan that Tether made to Bitfinex to help it cover its 850 million USD of alleged losses. Both Tether and Bitfinex are subsidiaries in iFinex, a Hong Kong-based corporation. That's it for this episode of Blockchain Central. Let us know in the comments what news we missed and also whether we should analyze any of those topics in more detail. Before you go, please note that this content does neither represent financial, legal, or tax advice, nor is it supposed to be understood or interpreted as solicitation to buy or sell any securities, coins, or tokens. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to Blockchain Central to never miss a beat. Also, check out our blog, link in the description below. See you on the next one.